how when we sing, we naturally sing with inflections by how we change our vowels, the vowels we choose to use whenever we're singing without words. And so we don't need to be overthinking and thinking about note groupings and like four, one, two, three, and things like this. Uh, Tabato said that this kind of this kind of way of teaching is actually very rudimentary. And so I actually want to encourage people to first assess and if, if the student can really sing with natural inflection in a very non-judgmental environment where we're just like, okay, yeah, sing, take your time. Let's just see how you naturally feel this. Because whenever we start to immediately assume that this person doesn't understand natural inflection or things like this, then we just start to drill in their head all these things like, oh, you know, think of this note grouping, do that, do this. And what people do is they overdo it. They overdo it and the flow gets lost in the music, the emotional flow, right? Really tapping into the emotions is, is very important because from there, all of these observable things that we talk about that sound technical are born naturally and in the right proportion and in a way that feels impactful, right? Not something you have to think about. Um, so, you know, I because and I realized this because I was taking a shower and I was just so touched by that first phrase that Leila Storch played in that Beethoven piece that I shared to commemorate her 100th birthday um, on February 28th. And I just want I, and I just wanted to sing it for you guys with the inflections that I was just naturally singing for it in the shower. So I was singing and I was like, it's beautiful. It actually just kind of, you know, it just kind of rose me from my chair, you know, in, you know, instinctually. It's so beautiful, you guys, the way she's played this phrase. And the thing is, when we sing it, we naturally sing it with these kinds of inflections. The, those notes that have more tension, naturally we give them more tension. And the notes that open more, like a block, like the notes that naturally open more, that have more of a fountain like effect, like they're leading into something, right? They have motion to them. Not even motion as much as they just open. They're that kind of color, that kind of quality, that kind of part in the phrase. Like, that note, it's like a fountain overflowing. It's leading. It has that natural flow, right? And the color is half of it. You don't have to make a big effort to be like, you force it like that, it sounds unnatural. It loses the feeling. This is such a plaintive, beautiful character. You, you know, it's not just about dynamics. It's about inflection. It's about flow. Okay. So like, and you, you naturally do that when you sing. It's about color. And so I hear a lot of people who will do all of these things, but the flow and the color is just off. It just doesn't feel sincere, you know? And so like someone might sing it like, Ta -da -da. they might do all of the right dynamics, right? But in terms of the flow and color, things sound, things sound monotonous. They sound stagnant. So someone would sing it, could sing it, if you sing it on all the same vowels, which feels so unnatural to me. It's like I have to think about it so hard to not do, the, to sing it like this, like I'm about to sing it. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da -da, ta -da -da -da. Sounds monotonous. By the end of the phrase, you're like, oh, what just happened? Uh, you know? And I hear people play like this. I hear people sing, and I rarely hear people sing like this because the voice is so natural. But I'm just saying, when a student is, is playing in this kind of way, this is showing that they're just blowing and they're thinking, but they're not really expressing, right? 
Where's the lilt, right? Where's that feeling of um, naturalness, you know? That really comes from singing something. Even like the way people play. And something sounds monotonous when it doesn't change direction in that natural way. When it doesn't. And the thing is, people overthink this whole changing direction thing. They go like, like they'll play, start playing, you know. Like, you know, they'll start playing things in a way that's overly like. That's too much. Right? <laughs> like, it's like if you were playing the Mozart concert, it says, It's more about the color and the vowel on that note, right? When you, like, as if you're singing, more than it is about whether you're doing exact dynamics. You know, the mind can only. Can, can only can, can only do so much, right? When you're playing. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna get up. And um, the mind can only do so much while playing, right? I need to plug in this phone. <laughs> um, so whenever someone is, someone could feel like they're very much fulfilling the phrase. Like, you know, like someone could be singing and playing in a very monotonous, unexpressive way, but they're doing all of the, right kind of uh, dynamics or whatever you would want to say. So someone could be doing um, but it's all monotonous. Right? That has so much more grace, so much more lilt, so much more flow, so much more lightness. Right? It's not all so heavy. Um, uh, it's more off the ground, as Stroman would, my teacher, Miss Stroman, would say. But, you know, it's funny. It's not just about lightening up your air for, for everything, right? It's about the inflection. And so, like, I'll hear people overdo it, you know? Or the sound will be so tight that it'll, it'll lack that flow. It also goes into the sound, too. It goes into what you demand from your reeds, all sorts of things. This is getting into oboe, oboistic things. But really, I want to keep it general, so I'm going to pan back. Um, with anything... It's, it's all, it's, it's really about within the phrase where it's, where it's changing, where it's morphing, you know, where it's changing directions. And so, and this happened all, you don't have to think about any of this. This is just what I'm observing. You don't have to think about any of this in the moment. You just sing. This is just how I naturally would sing it, you know? So, and I remember Miss Stroman would have us sing it sometimes. And, uh, I remember her saying something like, oh yeah, you always get the right vowels. And I never really understood, but like, now I kind of understand because then I, just today I was thinking, what if what if someone sang it just in a da 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 da? You know, it just sounds so monotonous, even if they were doing the right dynamics. It it transcends dynamics. It, it maybe what I'm talking about transcends dynamic contrast. You know, it it dynamic contrast is maybe a, maybe sometimes intertwined and related to it, but this is kind of independent of it in a way. And, you know, some people might call this line, some people might call this flow, inflection, this and that. It doesn't matter what you call it. Um, you know, people are very fussy and picky about what they like to call things, you know. So uh, just call it whatever you like, right? It's just like, you know, whatever religion you adhere to, right? <laughs> Anyways, the thing is, um, it's like... What what I'm getting at is is interesting because you know even with the like Mozart the opening, bum bum instead of bum ba da 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 that all sounds just bum ba da 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 it's really da 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 it's not to stop your air it's not to go it's not to overthink right that when people start thinking about numbers that's when they start overthinking and you can hear it sounds monotonous too because you're not flowing it it goes people start to overthink like oh four one two three but whatever i don't care and then things start to sound caricature-ish like a cartoon or something it doesn't sound natural or sophisticated or beautiful, right? And not, not that it, the character of everything is not is sophisticated, right? Or something like that. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying for this, you know, it, it's it even starts to, it lacks it even starts to lack the carefree, you know, joyful kind of 
a pear toe, right? Quality of it. Um, open kind of, you know, so I, I was just kind of thinking about this because this is an excerpt. I wanted to bring up the Mozart because this is something that people overthink, right? And we all, we've all we all grown to be almost like upset at this piece or something. But really, it's it's very fun. It's just a matter of bringing it that life, right? Bringing it that naturalness, not overthinking it, right? So, in, and I'll, go, I'll, I'll sing it in Don Juan to be... See, it's not... What's that? No, that all sounds static. It just sounds like notes happening like bricks or something. No. Because that E, my E, that E has more tension in it. And then that G, something about the color has more, more of a something, a sparkle, a tension, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. But there's something changes, right? Something transmutes a little bit about the feeling, right? And so it's so beautiful when you start to feel it more like that naturally and trust your singing. So the main point of this video is that I want people to trust their singing. When we get too involved with like, oh, it must sound like, um, you know, oh, it must sound like three, two, one, four. I don't even know. I don't like this number stuff, but, you know, if it works for you, whatever. But the thing is, even Tabato said that this whole number system is rudimentary. It's actually, he created it or whatever, or his teacher, who knows. But um, he, he created this number system, right? Because he, he, because he had students that would come in that couldn't sing something or couldn't, or, or they weren't tapping in, right? Emotionally. And so there wasn't that flow, and so he said he created this number system specifically for people who he called oboe blowers. People who aren't really singing through the instrument. They're blowing, right? So then everything just has the same old da 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 di, da da See, I can't even, when I'm trying to sound ugly, not go da e a di Because that's the natural feeling. Ba e that's the natural flow of it. That sounds like a synthesizer, like da 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 da. You know, <laughs> you know, it doesn't sound like music to me. It doesn't move me. It doesn't pull me out of my chair like someone's grabbing me by the collar. Like it's like it's that feeling. It's like this gentle feeling of ah, just take me right? On this journey. It doesn't sound like something, you know, when you're listening to an audition or, or like, you know, we used to do mock auditions at IU or other things. And when you're listening to someone play and you just want to put your pencil down and you just like feel like it's, it's lifting you. It's just transporting you. It's just not grabbing you by the collar in an aggressive way. Wow. What a, I'm such a funny, I give such weird misleading examples sometimes. Um, but just like, it's like someone is just like, there's something like, like it just brings your attention there and it's just like you're on a trajectory with them. That kind of thing. It has to deal with all of this. It's stuff that goes so much beyond dynamics, you know? And so I just want to share this. I think more important than dynamic contrast even is the, is the contrast of color and within the phrase, the flow, the lilt, things like that. That's what really gives it that quality where it's like, wow, this just makes sense. It just feels right. It's not subjective, really, as much as you would think. And, and uh, so I just wanted to share that, you know. Music is an art, not a science. <laughs>